What's up everybody? I'm Captain Jody with Bayou Bandit Charters. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm bringing you the most complete step-by-step -step maintenance video for your 100-hour service on your Suzuki engine. This is my Suzuki 200. It's time for the 100-hour service. I'm going to give you all the part numbers. We're going to be dropping the lower unit, changing the water pump, changing spark plugs, changing the engine oil, changing the lower unit oil, checking the anodes, changing the fuel filter, greasing and lubricating the machine. I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks you need to do a proper 100-hour service on your engine. It will save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars each time this service is due for you to do it yourself. All the part numbers will be included. All I ask in return is you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It will really help the YouTube algorithm and push this video out to more and more people on YouTube. Enough talking, let's get started. All right, we're gonna start by draining the engine oil. I went ahead and removed all the side plastics from the motor. I'll show you why I did that later on in the video. Get your Allen wrench. Pop her loose. That drain plug has got a magnet on it. You want to make sure there is no shavings of any kind on the drain plug. There is not. We are looking good. And where you don't make a mess, get yourself a little water bottle. Once it starts dripping, you can put it under that. Everything will go in your oil pan. You always want to make sure you remove your crush washer and throw it away. I like a little this little storage bin. I put all my gaskets, ceiling washers, crush washers, everything in there. This is going to be your part number for your crush washers for your drain plug. Right there. So I'll get me a new crush washer. Put on the plug. Screw it in, snug it up, just snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it. This is cast aluminum. You do not want to break those threads. Snug it up, you're good. All right, take our filter off. That I don't like. Because you will make a mess with these filters. We'll get our new oil filter. That is your part number right there for your Suzuki 200 oil filter. Remove the plastic covering right there. If not, it won't filter anything. Kiss your seals, that way you have your O-ring lubricated when you're putting your new filter on. Now here's the part I don't like. I don't like where these filters are located. You, don't, you only want these filters hand tight, right? Well, you don't have enough room to get a good grip with your hands to get that filter hand tight. You can get it close, but it's not as snug as I like. And you don't really want to put a filter wrench on these. Uh, I've read some forums where some people has had some pinholes in these Suzuki filters and pumped a lot of their oil out of their engine. So this is what I do. I take me a shop rag and I double that shop rag up. And I get in here and I put it around that filter as a little bit of padding. And then I'll get my filter wrench and I'll put on that filter. 
and I'll let it bite. And I'll snug that filter down. I don't want it super tight. That's about what I'd be hand tight right there. You don't want to bear down on it. You just want it snug. That's what I do and it's worked well for me. Now we're going to go up to the top side, put the oil in the engine. Take your fill cap out before you drain the oil. It helps it, helps it drain a little bit faster. Make sure you have a clean funnel. And this engine holds 8.5 quarts of oil. I use my local Suzuki dealer to get all my oil from. Uh, Amazon has it for like $45 a gallon. I can get it through my Suzuki dealer for $28 a gallon. They buy it in bulk and pour it in these gallon jugs and that saves me money. And being my motor is under warranty, I feel a lot better about it if I have any service issues, any warranty claims, if I have receipts of buying everything from my local Suzuki dealer where it's documented I save the receipts, or if I have any warranty claims, I won't have any issues with my warranty. And yes, I know it pours better turning the jug around, but I'm holding the funnel, so I'm just doing it this way. But it does pour a lot better if you have it inverted from what I've got it. You always gonna have that guy commenting on the video. Hey man, if you turn that jug around, it'll pour a lot easier and you are right save you the trouble and this is from my 20 hour service i used half to give me eight and a half quarts last time so i'm pouring this half in it was just right last time so it'll be just right this time and when we get done with all our maintenance items today we'll crank it up on the muffs let it run for about 10 minutes let it cool down, let the oil drain back down, and then we'll check our oil to make sure we're at the correct level. Quick, easy, didn't take long at all, not hard to do. Engine oil has changed. Now we go to the lower unit oil. All right, let me show you how to reset the service alarm on these Suzuki engines. When you reach your 20 hour service, and then every 100 hours, you'll get your alarm. And let me tell you this, the 100 hour service is at 100 hours, not 120 hours. So actually after the 20 hour service, we only have 80 hours on this motor, but it is time for the 100 hour service. It doesn't pop up at 120 hours. It pops up at 100 and then every 100 after that. You will get a beep, like every five second beep. It is loud, it is very annoying. You will have a disc on your display. It will say oil change required, maintenance required. I can't remember exactly what it said last night. But to reset that, turn your engine off. Pull your kill switch out. Turn your key on, don't crank your engine. Take your kill switch, Push it on, pull it off. Push it on, pull it off. Push it on, pull it off. Turn your key off. Put it back on. Crank your engine. Your alarm will be cleared. That's how you reset all your service alarms on these Suzuki engines. All right, the engine oil has changed. We're going to move on to the lower unit oil. All of this, if you have any any mechanical ability at all you can save yourself about four to six hundred dollars depending on your area and how much your suzuki dealer charges i love doing all the work myself that gets myself familiar with my engine if i have any issues out on the water i'm already familiar with my engine and i can probably fix it on the water or be able to get back home Get yourself a man size screwdriver. Don't play around with these flats on these drain plugs. You can wring them off very easily. Get you a good screwdriver. Have you a pair of pliers ready where you can bite that screwdriver and turn it as you apply pressure if you need to. There we go. You should get a little drip out of here. It shouldn't pour out that's what you want you know all your seals are good 
you want to check your magnet make sure you don't have any excessive shavings you will have a little on your 20 hour and a little on your hundred just from your gears meshing that looks good no issues there at all do not swap these plugs up the bottom one has the magnet on it the other two does not on these new motors they have two top plugs one is oil level and one says oil i never mess with the one that says oil just the oil level when you unscrew it you'll get a lot more flow also look at your oil your oil is clean looks brand new no water contamination in it at all that's what you want to see and as we unscrew it now we have our flow we've got air in the system and we've got our flow as the oil is draining out we will come over here and change our gaskets these gaskets are tight fit most of the time you have to kind of unscrew them we get our new ones same way they're a snug fit more or less have to screw them on like that and like that this is your part number for those gaskets they are not a crush washer they are a composite gasket you need to replace them every time you replace your oil they're cheap and it's a good safeguard to keep water intrusion from getting in your lower unit all right all of our oil has drained out do yourself a favor get one of these hand pumps it's plastic threads you just want to snug it up all you want to do this is a way to do it it's so much quicker so much easier to do it this way than it is to try to squeeze the tube roll the tube up from the bottom i used to do it that way i got one of these hand pumps now so what we want to do we want to level this motor we want to trim it down and level it before we fill it all right we've got the motor level uh, it holds 1.2 quarts but you don't really need to worry about that because you pump it till it starts coming out the top fill hole what's good about these pumps is they have a built-in check valve so when you got to swap your bottle over it's no big deal right so it should take all of this one and just a little bit of the new one so all you got to do is unscrew it you don't have to worry about kinking the hose nothing pours out which is the beauty of it and you still got a little left in here and we'll pour it in this one when we're done and we'll have it for our next service so now we pump we watch our fill hole all right we have oil coming out our fill hole now i had some comments on my last 20 hour video people say when you get to this point you're supposed to spin the prop and you can put a little bit more oil in it i don't know about that but we're going to do it i learn something new every day so we're spinning the prop and we'll see if it takes any more oil here we go one pump it did one two three four five six seven huh. i learned something new every day y'all we got about six more pumps of oil in that lower unit by spinning that prop a little bit thank y'all i had two guys comment on that on my 20 hour service video and let me know that that's something i needed to add i appreciate it thank you very much very helpful i'm gonna pass that information along to y'all did not know that so now we get our plug that does not have the magnet on it get her started 
my screwdriver is so long I can't hardly get it in there all right I'm gonna snug it up pretty good don't go crazy with it especially on a big screwdriver that's got a lot of bite and torque to it what I like doing is I like unscrewing the cap from the jug because like I said you got a check valve in there it's not going to come out that way it can spin as you unscrew have your drain plug ready have your screwdriver ready have a rag ready unscrew take that drain plug Get it started hand tight. Get your old man sized screwdriver. Snug it up. There we go. Now is the fun part. Now is the time to drop the lower unit to replace the water pump impeller. What I like doing, I like getting the whole kit. All I plan on changing out is the water pump impeller itself. I will order a replacement impeller. I will put it in my tote along with this kit. I don't even think my water pump is bad. The reason why I am pulling the lower unit is I want to make sure, I want to make sure all the bolts that are holding this lower unit on are lubricated where they do not seize up. I want to make sure the spline shaft going up to the power head is lubed up where it does not seize in the power head. There's been a lot of people with issues with these engines where that has happened. They may wait three, four years before they decide to change their water pump and they can't get their lower unit off due to the fact that the bolts have either seized in the midsection or the spline shaft has seized in the power head. Like I said, I plan on having this motor for years and years and years. I'm going to do everything I can to keep it operating good and where I can work on it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start by pulling the prop. That will lighten the load a little bit for the lower unit. Plus, we can lubricate our splined shaft. The prop goes on. We can check our seals, see if there's any fishing line, anything like that, that may give us an issue down the road. I know this is going to be a long video, guys. Bear with me. I wanted to be very, very thorough on this video. I've watched several supposed, supposedly the maintenance videos on YouTube, and they're incomplete. They skip steps, stuff like that. There's some good ones out there, but I wanted to do my best to give you the best possible step-by-step -step video on servicing this engine. inspect make sure there's no fishing line any issues there everything looks great be sure you take your tab off the bottom you have a hidden bolt up in behind it be sure to remove that bolt i like removing that bolt first all right we're gonna get in here with our 14 millimeter ratchet wrench break these bolts i take the back two out and the front two out leaving the middle two i'm going to loosen those up and then bump it and let it drop down on those two bolts all right we're down to the middle two bolts i want to break them and i want about a quarter inch gap That's about what I want. It's what we want right there. A couple of bumps. 
just like that. You see it is separated from the midsection. That's perfect. That's what we want. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this bolt completely. So we only have one bolt holding this whole lower unit up. All right, I've got it trimmed down enough that I can hold it up with my leg and my hand. I'm gonna take this last bolt out. got the last bolt out and we're gonna grab hold of this unit we're gonna ease her down just like that just like that and we've got it out not a bad job you're not really in a bind if you do it that way it's a safe way to do it where you don't drop anything. All right, what I do, I've got a car hauler trailer and I can put that skag right in the crack between the boards. It stabilizes everything, it's good to go. Something I'm seeing, that spline shaft is not greased good at all from the factory. In three or four years time, that would end up possibly locking up in that power head. Don't like that. Glad I pulled this unit to check on that. No grease on the shift shaft either. So we're gonna be using a 12 millimeter. We're gonna pop these four bolts loose. You just wanna snug these down. They're not gonna be tight. Dry. Dry as a bone on those threads. That's why you pull these lower units to lube everything, make sure everything will be good to go. This is a salt water motor. It's in the salt all the time. You can see a little bit of corrosion around that alignment pin right there. That's something we want to clean as well before we go back in and we're gonna put a little bit of oil on that, a little bit of grease on that as well. All right, now we want to work our cap off. There we go. We're going to pull that all the way off. We want to look at our cup. It looks good. No issues at all there. And we want to make sure how our impeller is oriented. You know what direction the shaft is spinning. And you look down the shaft and you know that shaft was spinning clockwise, right? It was spinning like this. So we got clockwise rotation. So when we put our cap back on, we'll, I'll show you how to do that. You want to make sure your impeller is orientated the right way. We've got clockwise rotation. All right, we want to push that impella up. Keep in mind, you've got a key in here that could potentially fall out. So you want to keep your hand back here on the back side and ease up till you start seeing a place that's got that keyway. It's right there on the back side. So we're going to rotate the shaft. Well, we can put our finger over it and push that impeller right off. We'll pull that impeller all the way out the top, right off, just like that. We'll hang it right there, that way we know our orientation that we had on it, we had clockwise orientation. Our bottom plate looks good. 
no wear on it. it looks very very good we're going to clean this surface do have some salt deposits around those pins those alignment pins we're going to clean around those we're going to open up our kit just get out our water pump impeller we'll leave all the gaskets everything else in there and we'll have them if we need them we're going to take our new impeller be sure on this keyway you have an end that's open and an end that is closed you want the open end down right where it'll go on the key and something that can help you if you need to mark where it's at i know it's almost even with this first fin so i can judge it from there but i'm gonna hold my finger right there as a marker i'm gonna have that up what i like doing before i push it down i've got some marine grease i put a little bit of my marine grease on my finger coat that key coat that area right there just a little bit now we can take our impeller push it on all the way down just like that now we're going to get our cup we're going to put a little bit of marine grease in the cup as well you don't want a lot you just want a little bit in there just a little bit to help that cup slide rotate in place we want to get a little bit of grease put on our pins where that doesn't seize up on us next time we change our impeller out just like that we want to check our o-ring our gasket make sure it is in good shape looking good we want to put a light coat of grease around that o-ring that will help it seal Now here's a very important part. When you get your cap back down, apply a little bit of pressure, take your hand and spin that shaft and that will roll the impeller in the direction it needs to go. Just like that. Very simple, very easy. You know you have your orientation right and you will not have issues in the future all right i put marine grease on all my fasteners that's the best thing i have found to keep those corrosion free some people say why don't you use anti-seize if you use anti-seize it is introducing another metal into your system. Anisease has metal compound in it, whether either it's copper, bronze, and that can give you issues. So the best thing I found, something I've always got on hand, is marine grease. All right, we just want to snug these bolts down. We don't want to over tighten them. That's all we want right there. Just snug them down. 
then next time we'll have no issues at all now we want to be sure we take plenty of grease grease this surface area here that's a machine surface it'll have a bushing that rides right there grease it up you've got another one right here and grease those splines don't grease the top grease your splines that is the most important reason why i pulled this lower unit off today was greasing these splines right here that way i've got a peace of mind knowing that this lower unit will slide right out next time i need to service it i'm also greasing the shift splines as well and i'm putting a little bit of grease right here in that boot where that will line up that's what your water comes through gets pushes through to your power head and i want to make sure that tube lines up good as well this old impeller looks great like i said it's only got 100 hours on it i will be keeping this i'll have it in the boat as a spare you never know what's going to happen that can save your butt on a weekend fishing trip if you're out of town something like that and it's on a saturday evening nothing's open you can't get one always good to hold on to that for a spare so that will be going in my little toolbox in my boat i'll put it in a ziploc bag and i can still use it that impeller has basically no wear at all on it as you can see it's still got the little mold marks on the fins brand new you could get another 200 hours out of that impella no problem all right if you're doing this job by yourself go ahead and take you some grease grease that first bolt up have it ready with your wrench ready to use when you go back in with that lower unit once you get that first bolt in you're good you've got time then to grease up all your other bolts so that's what we're going to do let's get this baby in here you don't want to bend your shift shaft anything like that so you want to make sure you get everything lined up and go in easy with her all right here we go I got it up about that far by hand and it's hitting something hard so i went ahead and put a chain come along around it to support it where i don't have to drop it all the way back down plus i wanted to put a little bit of grease on those two alignment pins so they look like they've got a little a little salt a little bit of salt deposits a little start of a little bit of corrosion on those so we're going to do that and see if we can get this unit up in place all right we got the lower unit back on i'm going to show y'all what i had an issue with where y'all won't have an issue with it the lower unit would come up about that far from being all the way i couldn't get it any further what i've learned is your shift shaft right here it's two pieces it has the same male and female spline right right there right up in there the problem was when i was pushing it up it didn't line up in that rubber boot it was off to either one side or the other and that's what i was hitting i was hitting up under the power head right there so what i did is i dropped the lower unit down a little bit i lined that up i pulled the, that connecting shift shaft off the lower unit and I kept feeling around and I lined up I lined it up up there in that rubber boot it's got a flat on it it'll only go one way it's a spline with a flat 
So I lined it up in that flat, pushed it up there. That grease I had on there made it stick and stay. And then I put a come along on it where I could go easy with it. And I worked it up, filling and pushing. Once I lined this flat up with the shift shaft, she went right up in place. So keep that in mind. If you pull these lower units to change your water pump, that was the only issue I had. Uh, I would recommend leaving that shift shaft extension in the power head, putting a zip tie or actually a vice grip would be great. Clamp that vice grip on the shaft right here. Before you even drop the lower unit, take your pair of vice grips, clamp right here on that part of the shaft with your vice grips here on this plate. That'll hold that shift shaft in place and you can drop that lower unit and you won't have the issue I did. So we just go back in reverse order the way we came out. We'll put our first bolt in. We'll get our ratchet wrench. All right, we've got our first bolt in. We'll get this old come along out of the way, out of the picture. Now we'll trim our motor up. to give us easier access to these other bolts. I'm gonna put all the bolts back in, be back in just a minute. You don't wanna over tighten these bolts cause you are going in cast aluminum. Snug them down real good. Go back and check them again. Don't forget your bottom bolt. Be sure to put it back in, snug it up, put a little anti-seize. Put a little grease on your tab bolt and you'll be good to go. All, right, all of our lower unit bolts have been greased. They're in, they're tightened up. Everything looks good. Make sure you grease your prop shaft as well. Put some on your threads. We'll get that big old four blade prop. Slide her on, bend her around, tap her down, and we are good to go. Of course, before we take the boat back out on the water, we will, we will hook it up to the muffs, verify that we've got proper shifting, verify our water pump's working good, everything's good. All right, before I put these side covers back on, this right here can be an issue for these engines. This is a water pressure valve. It's a little spring loaded poppet in there that when it reaches the spring tension, water will go up and flow. A lot of people has had cooling issues with these motors for not doing maintenance on this. All I'm gonna do is remove the two bolts Look at it, make sure it's in good shape. Lube up the O-ring and housing. If these stay in for a long time in salt water, they will seize up and they are a pain in the butt to get off. This will be a 10 millimeter. Pop those two bolts. And we will, of course, we will lube these two bolts up as well. We'll get our man-sized screwdriver in here again. Get right up under that lip. We'll get a second screwdriver in here. Work it out just like that. 
there we go that is our cover right up in here you have your actual water pressure valve that's all it does guys you get water pressure pushes it open and it allows that water flow to go up through a chamber all the way up no corrosion at all i always use salt away after every use with this motor as you can see it's clean it's in great shape that's what we want to see so we're going to put it back in its home just like that no corrosion whatsoever 100 hours of salt water use We'll get us some grease and we're going to grease this o-ring very good and the back face of this where it seats that way we won't have any issues in the future so we're going to put that back on it should pop, boom, just, just like that, right in place. We'll get our two bolts. And these are little bolts, so you don't want to put much pressure on those when you tighten them back up. Grease them down, and we're going to snug them up. Don't wring them off. Snug them up all we need right there another reason why i pulled everything off the lowers is where i could spray this stuff down all these bolts sit in the water all the time when you're running this engine so i use corrosion x on everything dealing with this outboard it's the best i have found and i'm gonna go in here Spray everything that I can get to. That is on the underside of these covers. I believe in this stuff, it works. All right, it's getting dark on me. We're gonna finish this tomorrow. Stay tuned, see you in just a second. All right, it is the next day. We're gonna start off by checking the anodes. I always run salt away in this motor. I flush it out after each use. We're going to see if that made any difference. Hopefully everything will be clean, very clean and clear inside the passageways. These Suzuki 200s have five anodes. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to pull every one of those. I suspect all my anodes will be good, but I want to lubricate these bolts. I want to check them, lubricate the O-rings, make sure I don't have any issues. All right, we're going to pull our anode. This is a 12 millimeter. And Suzuki did an awesome job designing these where they're easy to get out. Get you a 10 millimeter 1.25 bolt and it threads right into the cap housing. Just like so, you can pull the anode right off. Pull that anode out. And we just line them all up. We're going to be cleaning all of these. Should be able to just screw it in by hand. Give it a little wiggle. And they'll pull right out. All right. We've got our five anodes out. Not too bad. That's expected you will have those salt deposits sometimes people freak out when they see their anodes but the anodes are doing what they're supposed to do if i wasn't using that salt away those things would look horrible 
this is sawed away we're gonna put some in that cap right there We're going to clean these. Be careful not to damage your O-ring when you're cleaning these with a wire brush. Take us a little flathead screwdriver. Clean them salt deposits off. Like I said, these look really good for 100 hours. It means they're doing their job. We've got a little bit that's been eating away at them. And that's good. They're not near the point that they need to be changed. See a little bit right there where it's been, the salt's been eating it away. They're sacrificial anodes. These are sacrificial anodes. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. We'll clean the rest of these up and be right back. All right, as you can see, we've got our anodes clean. They're in really good shape for 100 hours of salt water use. Do not need to be changed, just inspected and cleaned. That's probably the worst one right there. I will get a set of anodes from when I do my next 100 hour service, which will be 200 hours on this machine. I'll get a set <clears throat> just in case. If it's time to replace them, then I would make sure I do a video on that to show you all the steps involved on replacing them. That one came off the bottom. That one had corrosion in these threads. I want to make sure I can run that 10 millimeter bolt all the way through. You see the little bit of buildup on that. So I'm going to see if I've got a 10 millimeter tap and I'm going to clean those threads out. Cause next go around, I don't want that to cause me any trouble. And just so you know, this is a 10 millimeter 1.25 thread pitch. So don't try to get the wrong size in there. That'll cause you problems. Little things like this can save your butt down the road. Only takes a few minutes. You can see everything that came out of those threads. Threads are nice and clean now. As you see, that's what we want. We're, all, <clears throat> we're also going to get a wire brush. Dip it in some salt away. Clean these openings. Like I said, don't freak out when you pull these. Because you will have salt deposits. You will have anodes eating away. That's part of it, people. Get a rag. Come in here and wipe this down. That's why I like doing the service work myself. Because this is my motor, right? You take it to some dealers. You take it some places. Not saying they're not going to do a good job, but will they go the little extra mile? Would they have took a tap and ran it through those threads to help you out next time? Maybe, maybe not. All right, now I'm going to get my marine grease. And I'm just going to put a thin layer in the hole and around the face. That way I don't have to worry about anything seizing up. Next time I pull these anodes. I 
all you want is a thin layer you don't want a whole bunch of it in there just a thin layer next time we won't have any issues I'm gonna make dang sure you put a lot on these bolts stuff like that will bite you in the butt now we're ready to pop them all back in You should hear them just snap in, just like so. Boom. Very good design that Suzuki had with these. Works very well, very easy to maintain your mo your engine with these. And I got bifocals on, people. So if the camera goes up every now and then, I'm trying to see through my bifocals. <clears throat> Finally got to the ripe old age of 47. <clears throat> and need glasses now. Now we're going to snug them up. And I'll say it a thousand times. Don't over tighten stuff. Snug them up. We're dealing with aluminum. Stainless steel bolts and aluminum. It doesn't take much to wring these off. All right, now we're going to check our thermostat. Thermostat isn't the easiest thing in the world to get to on this motor. But this will also help us access our fuel filter. So I always have you a good place to put your bolts where you don't lose them. Should be the last bolt. Okay, we take that cover off. Have four bolts. It's off. Now we got a little sensor right here. We unplug. And there we go. Get that piece off. And we're going to go ahead and remove these two bolts as well because we're going to be changing that fuel filter. And it will push out through those slots. So now we can access our fuel filter with no trouble. The tricky one's gonna be the one on the bottom. That's my biggest complaint so far. That's where they put the thermostat. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna cut the zip tie. All right, we're getting the old hose off. As I push this hose off, I can rotate this housing. All right. Just don't want to drop that bolt. There we go. All right. And there is our thermostat does have salt deposits built up on it 
There is the part number right there for our new thermostat. And these thermostats, the factory one is 150 degree. They do make an aftermarket one that is 170 degree. Be sure when you order it, you get the factory one. Unless you want your engine running 20 degrees hotter, which I don't. All right, there we go. There's our old thermostat. Doesn't look that bad. Doesn't look too bad in there. We do have some salt deposits. We'll get a wire brush. Dip it in some of that salt away. Get in here. Clean it. Definitely clean where the thermostat seats in here in that little mechanical seal. Make sure you get in there. Clean all that very well. all that salt guys now we'll get a rag we'll clean all that up real well get some grease as always Put our grease right in here where the rubber part of that thermostat seats and also once again on the face make sure we put grease on our three bolts all right we're gonna take our new thermostat Put it in place. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease where my hose will slide on easier, where I don't have to fight it. Hardest part is gonna be getting that bottom one started first. After that, it should be a cakewalk. Go ahead and see if we can get our hose put on. Yes, very nice, very nice. We're gonna go ahead and put a zip tie around that hose while we can. Get that zip tie in the right spot. Just like the factory one was. We wanna pull it good and tight just like so get our dikes cut the tail on it now we want to get that bolt and be very very careful not to drop that bolt. Pull our screen back off. That way we can get to that bolt. And you see, we've got some deposits in there on that air intake. We will get a shot back, vacuum all that up. 
Oh, we don't want that getting in our engine. Ratchet wrenches are great when you got clearance to use them. All right, we've got everything vacuumed out and cleaned. We're going to put this other hose right here back on where it goes. We're going to put our screen back on the intake, put our hoses back on. While we've got the cover off, we'll go ahead and get a little corro corrosion X. Spray those bolts. Now that's all done. We'll go ahead and change out our fuel filter. Pull that fuel filter out. This is your part number for your new fuel filter. Make sure it's in the same exact match, and it is. Take our new fuel filter, push it down in place. You do have a plug right there. Just watch it when you twist it. You've got enough slack in it that you can untwist it and put it back on. Probably best to unplug it. I didn't do that because I didn't feel like taking that side cover back off. But it, pro it would be easier to change out with the side cover off. Just watch your wires where they don't twist and pull. They have a lot of play in them, a lot of slack in them. Now, the last thing we have to do is the spark plugs. We're at a good setup, good position right now to do our spark plugs. We, we can get, we can see all the power packs right there. Should not be a big deal changing these spark plugs out. Get our 10 millimeter. Get our extension. This is a four cylinder 200. So we'll have four spark plugs. Rip over that rubber boot right there. Give it a little pull. And they'll come right out. And they are wired up in order. So there's no real way you can mess this up. I am going to have to pull the bottom hose off my fuel pump. We'll get it out of the way. That'll give us room to pull that one out of the way. At number two. And number one. Now we get our extension and our spark plug wrench and pull these plugs out. Check them out see what they look like. All right, that will be a five eighths, a five eighths spark plug wrench. Last but not least, Number four. All right, we'll get out our new plugs. As always, that is your plug number for your Suzuki Sport Plugs. And speaking with a Suzuki mechanic, they recommend putting a little bit of dielectric grease on the threads of these plugs. 
Not much. Just a little bit. About like that on all these plugs. Time to go in with the new plugs. Snug them up. If you don't know how to torque down spark plugs, go off the torque spec. You don't want them super tight. You want them snug. And last but not least, cylinder number one. All the plugs are in. Now we'll go back in. with all our power packs. Wiggle them around, make sure those boots fit in like they're supposed to. Number three is the one you gotta be easy with. Make sure you get it past your fuel pump. Work them around. Pop them in place. Good old number four. Y'all know the routine. Get some grease. Put on those threads. Once again, snug them up. Don't over tighten. Don't forget your fuel line for your fuel pump. Now all we've got to do is put our air intake back on, our covers back on, starting with the bottom one. They're slotted right, so you don't have to take the screws. The bolts all the way out, you pop it in just like that. Now we just repeat the order operations, putting everything back on. All right, next thing we need to do is grease this motor. We've got a grease fitting right there. You don't want a ton of grease in these fittings. About six shots. All you need, you've got one right there. Maybe the camera can see it right there. You also want to put a little bit of grease on the end of your trim rods because that is a wear point. If you're trimming down and you hear that pop, 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 you need to put a little grease right there. All right, your second grease fitting going to be right up in here and that's for your shaft main shaft running down and you see that water that's coming out you want to keep pumping till you get all that water out you get some good grease in there we got two more I got to show you trim our motor all the way down Now on these, you want to turn the motor all the way, one direction. That will get your hydraulic ram out of the way where you can get on that fitting right there. All right, get that one greased. Turn your steering all the way the other direction. And you can get to that one.
all right i know that was an extremely long video but i wanted to put the best video out on youtube on how to do a hundred hour service on your suzuki engine only thing i have left to do is i'm fixing to hook this motor up to the muffs with the cowling off i'm gonna crank it up let it run let it get to temperature look for leaks look for any codes look for any alarms because we've done a lot to this motor we want to make sure it's good to go to get out on the water hope you enjoyed the video if it was helpful if it's going to save you money like the video hit that subscribe button i appreciate it a lot it helped my channel grow if i have any issues at all with this motor any service work any issues anything at all i'll be sure to do a video to let y'all know so give the channel a subscribe thank you for your time see y'all on the next one